Jason, we have become benumbed. We look at the Bloomberg virus tracker. We look at the Bloomberg vaccine tractor, and I think we've just lost perspective at 400,000 deaths. What's it like right now in our hospitals versus what it was like in June or in the shock of March? Yeah, well, good morning. Um, we're certainly in a wave upon a wave, as has been described. Um, many sites, particularly in rural areas, are at capacity. Um, we're moving patients from uh, ICUs to medical surgical wards uh, before they can really be fully recovered. Um, we're moving them out of the hospital to home-based care models, uh, again, before they have fully rehabbed. Um, it, it's, it's a dire situation in many facilities across the country. Um, good morning also from London, Jason. When do you expect to start seeing the implications of vaccinations? I was speaking to one of our experts, Sam Fazeli, and he was saying, you know, this is the critical issue is, okay, you're vaccinating. When do you start seeing the fruits of that? Yeah, certainly we're going to have to get well beyond our, you know, just over 16 million doses that have been administered in the United States. Um, we're going to need to see greater uh, vaccine penetration into the community. Um, you know, we're thinking about estimates of at least 50 percent of the population before some level of normalcy returns. Um, we're really thinking that this, uh, you know, the 100 million doses in 100 days is, is a laudable goal. It would be it would help us uh, move toward the, some sense of normalcy much faster. Uh, but we're, it's an uphill battle not only for the supplies, uh, the vaccine availability, but also, uh, you know, public hesitancy against the vaccine. So what kind of roadmap are you looking at, like, when we get to that critical amount of people being vaccinated? Do you see it first on, you know, cases? Is it hospitalizations? Like, when do we start, you know, thinking this is a success? Well, we have to remember that the two current vaccines that we have are required either three weeks uh, in the case of uh, the Moderna vaccine or four weeks in the case of the Pfizer vaccine. Um, uh, actually, it's just a reverse of that, three weeks in Pfizer, four weeks in Moderna. Um, but with each of those vaccines and you get your second dose, it takes an additional 14 days uh, to receive, you know, a high enough level of antibody to provide full protection. So uh, we have to remember a single shot doesn't get us uh, out of the woods. It's that second shot and then several weeks after that. So if we're thinking about getting 100 million doses in 100 days and that number of people immunized, we really have to think that each, each individual needs two injections. And we should begin to see uh, reduced transmission in the community, we hope. Um, and certainly, if people are, um, as, as the number of people protected around a community increases, the number of people infected and the transmission rate should begin to fall. In terms of the modeling timelines for that perspective, it's all going to be dependent on the speed in which we roll out the vaccines and thus the focus on trying to get those shots in the arms as quickly as possible. Here in the UK, they're giving the Pfizer vaccine 10 to 12 weeks after the first dose, or at least the second dose after the first dose. Is that something that the US should be thinking about? I think that really, you know, the trials looked at giving the vaccine uh, for the Pfizer, you know, which today I get my second dose of that vaccination, um, is is really designed for three weeks. We sh we do not expect that if you get it a little later that it's going to result in, in much uh, of a difference in efficacy. Um, we'll know that data uh, arising from the UK. The reason for doing that is to spread out production, right, and to get more people in the first dose, which we do know will have some level of benefit, particularly and potentially benefiting reduced morbidity and hopefully along with that mortality. But I, I would say that um, right now our strategy has been um, to follow the, the way the clinical trials were, uh, were implemented. Uh, certainly expanding that window uh, would increase the number of doses available on hand immediately. Do, do we know, Jason, after the first dose, how much antibodies you actually have, if you have antibodies? Well, we, we do know that, that people um, after two weeks begin to show uh, levels of antibody. Uh, the question of protective levels of antibody 
uh, remains to be seen. Each individual will be somewhat different. We know antibody production begins, but we also know then the studies between dose one and dose two, a number of individuals in, in both uh, of the studies for Moderna and Pfizer did uh, actually become infected in that interval. So we know that while antibodies are increasing, they may not be yet protective levels of antibodies and thus necessitating that second dose of the vaccine to get that booster response to push our immune system into a level of protection that will ultimately lead to the prevention of disease. Jason, are, are we two months away from really knowing whether these vaccines are as effective as we think also against new variants? Yeah, I mean, the studies are ongoing from the UK variant to the South Africa variant. And, and I think what's most concerning is the data that is emerging out of Brazil. There have been several modeling evaluations of the variants in Brazil in particular, and there's a single uh, nucleotide variant um, within that strain in Brazil that has been shown to escape neutralizing antibodies. And those are basically the antibodies produced by the vaccine. And there have been about 180 cases um, from Rio, about 60% of them were from Rio and the surrounding areas in Brazil. And they, in the basic premise here is that when we've looked at them in the lab, they do seem to have a, a potential mechanism to escape the antibodies. Now, whether or not that is going to be something that becomes widespread, whether or not those are small, unique cases, uh, we expect evolution in viruses, particularly when they're this widespread. The question and the hope is, is that we can contain that and it prevents it from becoming something that we as a, a larger concern outside of the area of Rio and the surrounding areas in Brazil.